Hey, what's up guys? This is Nine Lives coming at you with my Call of Duty World War II quick scoping tutorial. Now we're going to get pretty in depth in this video because I want you guys to be able to get as good as you possibly can at quick scoping. And in order to do that, you're probably going to need to watch this video more than once. So what I'd recommend you do is you add this video to your favorites so you can come back to it and refer to it again after you've spent some time practicing. Ultimately, that's how you're going to get the best at quick scoping in this game. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss future strategy and tip videos about quick scoping throughout the year. I'll also keep you guys up to date on what the best sniper rifle to use is in case anything changes due to a nerf or a buff or a new snipe rifle being added to the game. Basically all of my content is about sniping so if that sounds good to you you can subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos. Now without any further ado let's get into the tutorial. So we're going to get progressively more advanced as we go through this but the absolute first thing that you're going to want to do is really master the scope and speed of the snipe rifles. So scope in and try and take a shot as soon as you can. As soon as the scope goes up you should be able to consistently take a shot one to two frames after the scope is up. So you can see I slowed it down here. That shot was on the second frame. You want to be able to commit that to muscle memory so you don't even have to consciously think about taking the shot immediately when the scope comes up. And you want to do it enough times that it just becomes natural. So depending on what type of sniper rifle you want to use, it's going to be a little bit different. So this is a Springfield and the Springfield actually scopes in a little bit slower than the Car 98, which I was using before this. So with the Springfield, because it scopes in slower, you're going to want to get used to this one too if you're going to use a Springfield or a different sniper rifle. So just scope in a bunch of times, kind of get used to that feeling and try to take the shot immediately when the scope comes up. I'll do a little bit of a comparison here so you can see what the difference is between the scope and speeds of these two rifles. So here we've got the Springfield and it scopes in in 0.4 seconds. So you can see in the bottom right corner there is 0.4. And then with the Car 98, it scopes in in 0.334 seconds. Now, even though that's only a tiny fraction of a second, you want to be able to shoot on the frame or the frame after the scope comes up, and that's where it makes a big difference. So largely because of the scope and speed advantage of the Car 98, that's what I have on my main custom class when I'm playing this game. I also use rapid fire, FMJ, and extended mags. For my basic training, I use primed, which allows you to have an extra attachment on your primary weapon, and also it reduces flinch. So if you guys want to try using the exact same custom class setup as me you can but there's a little bit of personal preference to it so you don't have to use exactly what I'm using you could also use the M1903 if you don't have the Car 98 or the Lee Enfield in order to get the Car 98 you have to prestige your mountain division once and then you unlock it so a lot of people have been asking me to show my custom class so I thought I'd throw it in there for you guys uh, also a lot of people have been asking me what sensitivity I play on so as you can see here I use six sensitivity on both horizontal and vertical Default stick layout, by the way, and also I use the tactical button layout, which puts crouch on the right thumbstick instead of on the B button. So once you've got your custom class set up as well as your sensitivity, what I'd recommend you do next is head over to the firing range in the headquarters and you want to get used to that sensitivity by scoping in and dragging over to a target. So I'll show you what that looks like. Ideally, when you're quick scoping, you want to be able to scope in as close as you possibly can to the target. But there's going to be a lot of cases where you have to drag your scope a little bit to correct your aim. And that's why in the firing range here, what I'm doing is I'm aiming just a little bit off the target and then dragging in until I'm on top of the target. So that way, in those cases where I'm not able to aim perfectly on the target before I'm scoped up, I can correct my aim as fast as possible and take the shot. If you're having any trouble with this, you might want to consider lowering your sensitivity a little bit. Six is what I play on and it's already kind of low, but if you're playing above six, you'll probably want to lower it. You should also be very comfortable tracking a target exactly in the center of your screen. So I put a little crosshair there so you can see where the center of my screen actually is. If you're able to do both this and drag your scope over on top of the target consistently, then you've got the basics down really well. In Call of Duty World War II, it's incredibly important to get good at this if you want to effectively quick scope because there's no aim assist on the sniper rifles in this game. All the other weapons have normal aim assist and what aim assist does is it slows down your aim a little bit as you're targeting over an enemy, but they decided to take it off of sniper rifles because they thought that quick scoping was exploiting aim assist. It really doesn't have anything to do with aim assist, but because there's no aim assist on the sniper rifles in this game, what you have to get used to doing is making small adjustments in your scope really quickly. So this is about six frames right here where I line up these two enemies to get the collateral and you have to make a pretty small movement with your thumb in order to do this. So there's that small adjustment within about six frames and then I take the shot. 
It's not something that you'd really notice when you're watching videos of people quickscoping, but if you're watching somebody quickscoping, they're always doing this, and it's something that you need to get really good at, and in order to get good at it, you need to be very familiar with your sensitivity. Moving on to the next point here, it's actually going to be a little bit more advanced, and this is something that you can constantly be improving on and working at, no matter how good you are with the snipers. So what I've done here to demonstrate is I've put the crosshair back on the screen so you can see where I'm pre-aiming, and then I put a red circle where I want to show you guys that I'm looking. So there's the red circle again because I'm looking at the boxes, but I'm pre-aiming at the top of the stairs. So the area where I'm pre-aiming is where I think there's the most threat. So that door right there, that was the most threat as I was coming up the stairs. As I run through this building, my crosshair is glued to the side of this shelf. I'm looking at the top of the crate and then I pre-aim the top of the stairs behind the statue. The idea behind this is when you've pre-aimed a spot and then an enemy pops up, you're able to scope in and take them out immediately with the least amount of movement and the least amount of aiming because you're already aiming there. This is how you're going to be able to consistently win gunfights and make it so that the enemy barely has an opportunity to kill you. The better you are at pre-aiming and assessing where the next most dangerous spot to look is, the faster you're going to be able to kill your enemies and the more freely you're going to be able to move around the map. So this is something to always be conscious of and constantly be trying to improve at because it makes a huge difference on how effective you are while you're trying to quick scope in an actual public match. Of course, there's nobody in this match. This is a private match. I'm just running around to demonstrate. Here's what it looks like in a live public match though. So as you can see, I'm pre-aiming where I think the biggest threat is. So it was the hole in the wall on top of the tank, behind the rubble, back on top of the tank now, still looking at the hole in the wall. As you can see, it's all laid out there on the screen. And I'm always pre-aiming where I think the biggest threat is and keeping an eye on where I think the next biggest threat is. That way I'm always ready to snap over to where the enemy shows up and I very rarely get caught off guard. Now, this is a skill that you're gonna want to be good at even if you're not sniping. If you're using an assault rifle or an SMG or any other type of gun, you're gonna be wanting to do this all the time. But the difference is when you're quick scoping, the Car 98 has a 0.334 scope in speed and the Springfield and the other guns in the game have a 0.4. So by default, just by trying to aggressively snipe in quick scope, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage and you have that handicap of having to bring your scope all the way up before you can take an accurate shot. If you're up against opponents that are actually pretty good with SMGs and assault rifles, a lot of the times they're gonna be already aiming down sights as they're rounding corners where they expect enemies to be. They're also gonna be hip firing you as soon as they see you if your close range as they're bringing their sights up to be more accurate. So because most of the time the SMGs and assault rifles are going to have an advantage in medium to close range engagements, you want to be better at pre-aiming than your opponents so that you can close that gap and it gives you enough time to fully scope in. So now if you're comfortable with that whole pre-aiming idea and you feel like that's in the front of your mind and maybe you've even spent some time at the firing range getting used to that sensitivity and how much time it takes to scope in and center your target on the screen if you're scoped a little bit off and you've got the scope in speed down so you're able to consistently take a shot in the first or second frame that your scope goes up, then it's time to hop into a custom match against some bots and put this into practice. This is going to be the absolute fast way to improve your skills at quick scoping. I like to go with the map Flak Tower because I think it plays the best when you're up against bots and I set the game rules to have a 30 minute time limit because you should be doing this for at least 30 minutes at a time if you're serious about improving and I set the score to unlimited. Now all you need to do is set up the bots so that you have probably about 10 of them. Of course you can put more or less depending on your preference but make sure you put the difficulty of the bots to recruit because this is just target practice we don't need them to actually be shooting back too aggressively and and once you've done that, you can save it as a custom mode that you can just go back to. So I'm just going to call this training and then uh, we won't have to set this up again. And you can go back in and make changes and save it if you need to. But uh, yeah, so then you are good to go and you can start the match. So this right here is probably the best place to stand on Flak Tower. Basically what I want to do is get into a position where the bots have to run to me and they can't really sneak up behind me. So you can see in this spot, they're all kind of running over to me. I just stay here and you really don't want to be chasing down bots. There's no reason to be running around the map trying to find them. You really don't want to be doing that. Just find a spot where they're going to be running at you and that's going to be the most efficient way to do target practice basically. So while you're doing this, keep in mind you want to be trying to stay in your scope for as little amount of time as possible because if this was a real match against real players, you don't have time to be staying in your scope forever. So try and see if you can get some kills where you're just one or two frames in the scope. And of course, if you want to, you can aim a little bit off of them and then drag onto them, like as if you needed to correct your aim. Because in a live match, 
you're often going to be having to do that where you need to correct your aim and, and drag over to them and then take the shot. So you can intentionally scope off of them a little bit if needed, just for the sake of practicing that. So this first spot that I'm showing you, ultimately you're pretty stationary. If you want to try and be a little bit more active and get moving a little bit more and you feel like that would be good for your practice, I would recommend going over to the middle of the map here and just kind of doing some laps around this circular thing. So this is a, a little bit more, um, you know, running around and sometimes it can be good to practice that as well. So as you can see, I'm just gonna kind of do some laps around this and shoot the enemies as they come up. It's gonna be a little bit less predictable where the enemies are coming from, which uh, gives you like kind of a different type of practice. Um, and of course, you're gonna wanna try doing this with different types of sniper rifles, different types of attachments. Here, I'm using the uh, unscoped CAR-98, just for something a little bit different. It actually behaves very differently from the scoped CAR-98, like the way that it feels and the, the sensitivity when you scope in and everything like that, or when you, when you aim down sights. So, you're going to want to try practicing with different setups. While you're doing this, I would highly recommend being very conscious of where you're pre-aiming, where you're looking, how long you're staying in your scope. And also something else I want to throw at you guys is to practice making yourself a difficult target. And this is what I mean. So between each shot, I'm getting behind cover and only exposing myself when I'm ready to take the next shot. So I'll play that again in slow motion here. There's the shot. And then I go back behind cover. Then I pop out, take a shot as quickly as I can go back behind cover. So this is something that you're probably not used to doing if you're used to using SMGs and assault rifles because there's really no need to get back behind a wall over and over again like that. But with the sniper rifle, you have to pull the bolt back and you can't attack at all while you're pulling the bolt back. So you need to get behind cover to stay safe. Here's the clip from earlier, slow down a little bit to emphasize how I'm using cover. So I get behind the wall, wait for the bolt to pull back, then swing back out, and take this guy out as quick as I can. This is These are bots, um, this is from the private match. And uh, again, I'm going to do some circles here and then I'll start to, to use cover a little bit more once I start getting outnumbered. It's mostly when you're getting outnumbered that you wanna be really sure that you're using cover to your advantage because otherwise you're probably just gonna die. So here we go again, slowed it down. There's a guy behind me, so I take the shot, run back into, into the inside of this circle thing, come back out, take the shot as quickly as I can. I actually uh, didn't scope in fully, so it missed. Uh, but then I do it again. Now, if you don't have cover, what you can do is you can strafe over to the right, strafe over to the left, just move as much as you can between shots and try and make yourself a difficult target. Even if there's no wall or other type of cover around you, you wanna try to move in a way that makes you hard to hit. So check this out. No cover right here, but I strafe over to the right. So strafe basically means sidestep and I take the shot. So uh, the way that I like to strafe is I like to sprint strafe. So sprint and then pull to the left or sprint and then pull to the right. So I do it again here, sprint and pull to the right, then take the next shot. And uh, I actually crouch there as well. So crouching is another thing you can do to give yourself a little bit more time. You'll have to be on the tactical button layout if you want to effectively crouch between shots because on the default button layout, you'd have to be pressing B and that means you'd have to take your thumb off of the thumbstick in order to crouch. With the tactical button layout, you just press the right thumbstick down so your thumb's already gonna be on there and you won't have to take it off of the stick. Now, if you do wanna try crouching between shots a little bit, make sure that it doesn't become a bad habit because there's times when you really shouldn't crouch between shots and if you're doing it too much, then it can slow you down. All right, so I wanna do a few freeze frames here and show you how long I'm staying in my scope. So that shot there, I was in my scope for two frames. This one here, I was in my scope for three frames. Now, this is an interesting one because I actually scoped pretty far off of the enemy here. So I have to drag over to him. That was one frame, two frames, three frames, four frames, five frames, six frames, and then I take the shot on the seventh frame. So essentially over time, you wanna work on staying in the scope for as little amount of time as possible because the whole time that you're scoped in, you're super vulnerable to enemies who can see you from outside of where your scope's looking. And obviously you don't wanna give the guy in your scope an opportunity to kill you either. So the best way to practice this is going to be to work on your pre-aiming. So looking where you think the enemy's gonna be. And I put the crosshair back on the screen here so you can see where I'm pre-aiming. And also I'm lining the enemies up into the center of my screen as my scope is coming up. That's really important and a lot of people don't do that, but make sure that you are centering the enemy into the middle of your screen as your scope is coming up. So as soon as the scope is up, 
you can take the shot. And it's gonna take a long time to perfect that, but make sure that you have it in mind, especially as you've been practicing this for longer and longer. It's one of the more advanced things that over time you really wanna master. So if this video has helped you, please take two seconds to leave a like on this video. You can probably tell it took a lot longer to make than a regular video, so a like would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Again, if you favorite this video, you'll be able to come back to it for future reference, which will really help if you're serious about getting better at quick scoping. Also, please consider enabling notifications so you get an alert when I upload new videos if you're interested. There's another one of my videos linked on the screen now if you have some time to watch more. I'll see you guys soon with a new video. Peace.